This is Casey McBride with the NationalCrimeSyndicate.com. Welcome to Uncle Frank's Place. Hope you enjoyed our new music. Thought we would change it up around here a little bit. Now, by the time this episode comes out, it's going to be Thanksgiving in the States, so we thought we would do something a little less serious and a little bit more on the fun side. And we're going to do a couple episodes dedicated to mob movies and their role in the mob history genre. I got together a few of my friends to talk to them, and uh, I wanted to originally have a roundtable discussion with everybody at one time, but with time zones and schedules, it was impossible. So I interviewed a couple people separate, and we're going to edit them all together into a couple episodes, like I said, dedicated to the mob movie genre. And for our first episode, we've got Mike Mafucci, my partner in crime over at Uncle Frank's Place, and we're going to be joined by Gary Jenkins from Gangland Wire. And Gary's the man who did the documentary film, Gangland Wire, and he's going to be hosting the first annual Kansas City Mob Film Festival. And we wish him best of luck with that over uh, this weekend. So we're pleased to have him as a guest. And we also have another Gary, Gary Pastor, who's an actor who's been involved in numerous mob movies. And uh, we're thrilled to have him and and to get his input on this subject. So without further ado, uh, here's our first episode with uh, Gary and Gary. Hope you enjoy it. How are you doing today, Mike? Good, Casey. How's it going? I'm doing great. I appreciate you being here as always. Um, we are also being joined today by Gary Jenkins, who has just uh, shown up on our screen. Can you hear me, Gary? How are you doing today? Hey, Casey. Hey, Mike. Good to be here. <laughs> hey, guys. Gary, we've also got Gary Pastor, um, the actor, with us today. If you want to say hello. Oh, hi, Gary. You know, Gary, nobody names their kids Gary anymore. Have you noticed that? <laughs> Hi, Gary. No, yeah, I know. I did notice that. It's, uh, I, I don't know. I was. It was supposed to be my father's name. My father's grandfather's name was Gennaro, and my yeah. mom, oh. being I- Irish and German, would have none of that. So, <laughs> and she knew if they called me Gennaro, that my nickname would be Jerry. So they settled on yeah. Gary. But I don't know. Uh-huh. That's the story I got, and I'm sticking <laughs> with it. It was a really popular name about 19, right after the war. If you go back and look at popular names, it was in the top 10. But I'd say it's because of Gary Cooper it was a popular movie star. I don't know, but yeah, it was a exactly. really popular name. Exactly. <laughs> Nobody does it anymore. It's sad. <laughs> no, I know. <laughs> well, now after you guys, maybe there's going to be a few more Garys out there in the next generation. So, <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah, but... I'm going to be such a huge star. They're going to name him after me. <laughs> you might yeah, be. me too. I'm on the way. You know, I, I, I've only got about 10 more years, and, and I, I, I'm i going to make it, <laughs> and then I'll die. <laughs> uh, from your lips to God's ears, I hope it's true. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, um, Gary, uh, Gary Jenkins, uh, first of all, uh, we're going to start with you just real briefly. Uh, I was wondering if you, you know, just give uh, everybody a little bit of a rundown of a little bit of your background briefly um, and uh, talk a little bit about your film festival that you've got coming up here. All right. Well, uh, this is Gary Jenkins from uh, Kansas City, Missouri. I was a Kansas City, Missouri police officer from 1971 to 1996. I was lucky enough to get uh, taken into the intelligence unit in 1976, uh, right after the Republican National Convention. Actually, they called up a whole bunch of extra help during that because we had so many protesters in town. Uh, And I worked that until I got promoted in 84 and then came back about 89 or 90 until 92, 93 as a sergeant down there. So most of my career, 13, 14 years of my career was spent – uh, investigating organized crime and, and other uh, groups that advocate civil disorder or uh, the more sophisticated uh, drug organizations in Kansas City that would come to Kansas City and that kind of thing. Uh, uh, I uh, retired in 1996 and uh, went to law school here in Kansas City in the University of Missouri at Kansas City. And I'm still practicing law, only I'm not doing very much, just a few traffic tickets. But in the uh, oh early... Of my career practicing law, I didn't have much to do. I just hung out my own shingle, and and I got interested in making documentary films after the digitalization came into being, and you could do it so easily, and I could get a editing machine, and I could get a camera for a real reasonable price, and so I I made a few kind of small short 
films and then I, I tried a longer one and tried a longer one and then I tried the one that I'd always wanted to do and that was Gangland Wire, which is uh, the story. I worked this story actually on the ground uh, as a cog in a big machine of how the FBI uncovered um, Kansas City, Chicago, Cleveland, and Milwaukee families skimming money from Las Vegas casinos. And we had the first wiretaps and hidden microphones in that investigation here. Of course, it spun off to all those other cities, too, over the next couple of three years. And I was lucky enough to work part of that. And so I want to tell that story from the Kansas City viewpoint. Because Casino, the movie Casino, does not really tell it much from the Kansas City viewpoint. And it would not have happened had we not had this little hidden microphone in the back of the Villa Capri uh, restaurant, why well, it, it may not have happened, at least not as soon as it happened in the way it happened. And so I wanted yeah, to tell that your... story, and I was able to do that. Go ahead, yeah, Casey. I love that doc, the, uh, the Gangland Wire documentary. I can't recommend it enough. Um, so anybody that's interested in seeing that, it's uh, you can get it on, on Gary's website, it's gang, uh, ganglandwire.com, which also has tons of other stuff that he's done. I mean, like I always say, you're – the busiest guy out there. You have so many things going on at it all the time. Um, <laughs> well, but I started caught... a true crime mafia podcast, and there's about 200 episodes there on the website. But go ahead, Aaron. Yeah, I mean, they're, Aaron, they're... I'm used to working with Aaron. Go ahead, Casey. Yeah. No, they're they're great. And your episode yesterday was real good too, where you guys were talking about uh, the French Connection in the movie. So I thought that was kind of topical with what we were going to be talking about today: the difference between reality yeah, cool. sometimes and and, and yeah. movies and entertainment. But um, now, real, yeah. real quickly, before we go on to our other guest, uh, tell us a little about you have a, a film festival coming up here in November. That's uh, by the time that this comes out, it's probably going to be a little bit closer. So tell us a little bit yeah. about what that's going to be all about. Well, it's uh, there's another uh, documentary filmmaker, and and then there's a retired FBI agent who has written a couple of books. He's actually he's an agent that I worked with during the uh, skim investigation. They called it Operation Strongman at the time. So this other filmmaker he he did a uh, documentary about Kansas City mob all the way back to the turn of the century when the Black Hand folks first arrived, and then how it you know, kind of morphed into the more modern criminal uh, crime syndicate and, and through the bootlegging days of prohibition and how they uh, interface with the local political machine and bring up, brought them all the way up to the straw man investigation. And my movie, of course, takes off from the straw man investigation and, and goes on forward. So Terrence is going to show his movie. His name is Terrence O'Malley. And I'm going to show my movie, but then in between, we got a, a theater, in a, a small theater in the... Uh, really kind of an exclusive shopping district here in the midtown Kansas city called the crown center. And they, uh, they let us have one of their theaters for the weekend. So we, uh, he's got, we're going to show, I think gangland wire first, and then uh, we're going to do a film, uh, a, a mob forum with uh, Bill Asley and uh, myself and Terrence O'Malley. And we'll talk about our own experiences and, and allow people to ask us questions. And then we'll show the uh, uh, Black Hand Straw Man. That'll be on the first day. And the second day, we're just going to show the two movies, but both Terrence and I will be in attendance to do a QA and a after our films. So wow. That's, that's I wish our, I could be there. Uh, Kansas City Mob Film Festival. We'd, we'd like to make it bigger. Maybe we will one of these days if uh, – we get a, a a good go something going here. Well, maybe we can add some other those uh, film documentaries in and get some some film people to come in. That'd be great. Yeah, um, that's really cool. You're doing that. I'm glad to see that that's working out. So hopefully we can get some folks your way. Um, and uh, yeah, keep us posted on how that goes. Actually, too. So take lots of pictures and lots of. I'm sure you'll be doing lots of Facebook and live probably from. Yeah, like yeah, that. we'll do a little Facebook live. <laughs> you and Aaron. I'm up on all that social media, Casey. You know that for an old yeah, 73 year old guy. <laughs> Way more than I am. You're, you're, it's where I learn all my stuff from. So, but. Uh, <laughs> All right, and so also with us today, we're really pleased to have a special guest. Uh, we have uh, actor Gary Pastor with us. How are you doing today, Gary? I'm good there. How are you doing? <laughs> I'm doing great. We we appreciate you uh, taking the time. We know you're on the road right now, so uh, taking no, the time. No, I didn't to do actually this. leave yet. I, I waited. I oh, great. Phone call out of the way, and then I'll go. I'm going to delay me a little bit, but that's all right. All right. <laughs> well. Tell us a little bit about, uh, first of all, how you got started in acting. Like, what, what gave you the bug, and when did you get started doing this? Oh, geez, in high school. Um, I was in a rock band. Um, I had a 
I was taking drama in high school, and my uh, drama teacher came and saw the band. And he came over and told me he wanted to do uh, West Side Story. And he wanted me to play Tony. And I was like, well, I ain't cutting my hair. And um, well, I don't know. I gave it some thought, and I wanted to cut my hair and doing West Side Story. And I was bit by the bug, I guess you'd call it. That's awesome. Your filmography, you've done a lot of, of acting kind of across the board and even directing and things like that. Um, but mm -hmm. you've got this kind of little thing, this niche going where you've been in a ton of mob movies. Um, can you tell us just like a little rundown of some of the ones you've been in? Yeah, I don't know why either. I don't look like a mobster. <laughs> <laughs> well, you got a good yeah, accent you... for it. Uh, yeah, I thought, thought I've been told. Um, yeah, I was in uh, Goodfellas. I was in um, Carlito's Way. I was in uh, Donnie Brasco and a bunch of others, you know. Um, I usually play a gangster or a cop. And uh, luckily, over the last two years, I've been getting more mainstream characters. Like, uh, I play a mayor in Adam Sandler's The Week Of, which is a pretty funny movie. And I was happy to play the mayor just to get away from... Look, I could, I could do mob in my sleep. I just, yeah. as an actor, it's just better sometimes if you don't always get stuck in that in that genre. I mean, some guys, they just love playing wise guys, and that's fine. You know, and I don't, I don't mind it either. You know, I'm, I'm actually on a TV series where I play a real life wise guy who ran 42nd Street. His name was uh, Matthew Ian Yellow, and they called him Matty the Horse. And um, I'm going into my third season on that show now. And uh, you know, I play him pretty convincingly. I did my research. Uh, I know of him. I actually met him once back in the day. Oh wow! Um, and every. Everybody tells me you play a better Matty the Horse than Matty the Horse. So <laughs> it's some kind of compliment anyway. Yeah, that's great. So, yeah, that was one of the things I wanted to kind of ask you about. Like, you know, you get um, you get roles like in The Week Of, which I saw. I liked it a lot. It was, was a very funny movie. Um, and, you know, that's a completely different thing. Or even if you're playing a, a mob guy that's a fictional mob guy, but you've played a, a bunch of real-life mob guys. Like you've Albert Anastasia, Matty the Horse. Twice. Um, Twice. Yeah, Albert yeah Anastasia you've done it. <laughs> so, you know, when you're playing somebody that's an actual, you know, was a historical character, how does that change what you do? Well, I think it ups your ante significantly, you know. I mean, I'm not paying the guy in the back of the pork store star marinara sauce, you know. Right. I don't want to be him. I don't want to be goon number one or goon number two. You know, those days are done. I won't. I won't go backwards. And to actually play somebody that really lived, you know, and, you know, everybody knows Albert Anastasia got shot in the barber chair. That's how they know him. And uh, I played Sammy the Bull. In fact, I think I'm the only actor out there that's played three real mafia characters. So Yeah, I mean, I've, I've got kinda, a lot of them. I've kind of made my way into the uh, infamous record book, I guess you'd call it. <laughs> um, <laughs> That's a good yeah, of, of, of doing that. You know, hey, listen, these guys were interesting. I mean, uh, as Gary will tell you, he studied them. He knows that they're uh, interesting, and it seems like America and most of the most of the world is fascinated with the mob. Um, so, and they do make great characters. You know, I mean, to portray them on screen uh, is just amazing. You know, even myself, I get so lost in it. The other night, the episode that I did on The Deuce, I had a scene with Maggie Gyllenhaal, who stars in the show. And, you know, when I do a scene, I, I actually fog out, you know. I just get so into it, I don't think about it. And I watched it the other night with my wife, and it's, I really, really take on this guy's persona. It's amazing how you, I transform. And I, I could say that because now I'm playing a small-time sheriff in a town out in Pennsylvania, where I totally lose my New York accent, you know, and <laughs> really? I'm, I'm battling the drug problem. And to be able to go from this character, uh, you know, Matty the Horse, to uh, this other character, Jerry Whalen, who is this small-time sheriff, to me is just a remarkable feat. You know, um, I, I pull this off, and it's going to be great for my career because it really shows that I have range, and I'm not going to be pigeonholed just to be a mobster all the time. Right, right. Um, 
Now, you've, you've got, speaking of the mob stuff, though, you've got a couple big movies, it looks like, coming up here in the future that you've done, too. Like you're going to be on The Irishman. Um, right. Now, you're you're playing Albert Anastasia in that, too, right? That's the other time you're playing him? Yep. Yep. And then, and, yeah. And, and, in the barbecue. Yeah. And then uh, in Appalachian, which is, man, this movie looks really good. Uh, the clips and stuff that I keep seeing on, you know, social media, one of the gripes that I have with mob movies sometimes is, it doesn't seem like well, maybe they don't have it in the budget. I can understand, but sometimes it doesn't seem like they take the effort to make it look realistic or the way it was. Because you know, there's tons of pictures out there of the way it did look. So there's no excuse for not, you know, trying to kind of assimilate some of that in. And the pictures that I see from from that man, it looks looks really good. All the characters look like the characters kind of, and so I can't wait to see that. Uh, can you give us any like teasers about how that one's going? Well, it's wrapped, but uh, Danny uh, Abacaser, who uh, is the director and filmmaker, he really paid attention to detail, and, you know, they didn't have a lot of money, but he did spend a good amount of his budget on the detail of the film. Uh, the characters did look great. We had the old cars. I mean, even myself, they uh, went through the pains to make me look like uh, Albert, and they built a, uh, a barbershop on the stage where I was actually killed in. And I fell down, got shot about 20 times, so I was a little worse for the wear for a few days, um, you know, after that. But, uh, yeah, he really did pay attention to detail. And nobody's ever done the story about how that Appalachian meeting uh, really went down and that the small-town sheriff, is the one who was responsible for uh, having 60 mob guys arrested because he didn't think Cadillacs in the town looked right. From the story I got is he went out to get a steak in a restaurant with his wife and they were out of meat. And um, they found out that there was some big party going down. So that, you know, that raised his eyebrow and he did an investigation and found out that there was a meeting going to happen with all these mobsters. And that's played by... uh, David Arquette, he did a great job as the sheriff. Amazing job. Yeah, it looks it looks good. Um, the Vito Genovese character looks a lot like him too. The whole thing just you know, I'm I'm real excited about it. I think it's gonna be great. Um, and then the Irishman, of course, is coming up. You know, Mike Mafucci actually he's in that movie too. He did it like a week long shoot for a scene for that. So we got two actors from that movie here uh, on the show. That's kind of cool. Yeah, they had a ton of yeah, people for that yeah. movie. Well, so let's uh, to kind of wrap it up here real quick before I, I let you guys go back to your day. Uh, I wanted to just kind of go around the room here. Well, I already got mics, but uh, Gary Jenkins, I'll, I'll start with you just really quick. I was wondering if you could give me a list of your top three mob movies that you like and if just one individual role from a person from a mob movie that you think is your favorite. Well, I guess I, I, I hate to say it, but probably The Godfather because it, uh, uh, it really encapsulated the, the span of from the, the whole uh, sociological phenomenon, if you will, from black hand days when the uh, early immigration of uh, tons of people from southern Italy came here and, and how they made their way into the world and and through the whole thing and, and was such high quality uh, acting and sets and, and the whole nine yards that, uh, uh, like I said, it, it's kind of an easy one to say, but that would be my favorite. The next one is Goodfellas. Goodfellas was such a uh, an accurate depiction of the guys that really do the work of making the money for these mob guys. There's a certain romance to being a, a made guy and, and, and people that, that grew up in the uh, subculture in the neighborhood, they, everybody likes to say, I know a guy, you know, I'm connected. Uh, I can get this done. And, 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 uh, and these guys are all part of that world and, and uh, they were the money earners. And, and I just thought it was, it's, it's kind of the, the, the foot soldiers, uh, that people really don't pay much attention to. You don't really know a lot of their names. I didn't know Henry Hill's name until that movie came out, and and, and he went into witness protection about that time, and and then started. He he was all over, you know, <laughs> the media himself. He's one of the, since Joe Valachi, he was one of the next guys that was just out there everywhere, and uh, kind of taught us about that that next level down just underneath the made guys. And it's the most right. important level in, in many ways. And then thief uh, was a really good, accurate depiction of, uh, I worked on guys like, uh, 
uh, the the characters that James Conn and J- uh, Jimmy Bellucci or uh, yeah, Jimmy Bellucci played uh, uh, those kinds of uh, professional burglars who were pretty sophisticated and had these you know like James Conn Jimmy Conn had that car dealership that he owned and and I knew guys and I worked on guys and I followed guys like that around and, and uh, they even had one of the that guy that was the technical advisor on that film he was I can't remember his name he's a Chicago outfit burglar and he even came down to Kansas City and did some stuff with uh, some similar kinds of, of guys that I was working on here in Kansas City. Uh, nice. I, as far as my most favorite role, probably I, it's got to be Henry Hill and Ray Liotta. It might be because of the filmmaker's technique of the voiceover uh, uh, of him telling the story kind of behind the scenes. But but I thought Ray Liotta did a, a really a pretty broad range of He didn't just play a tough guy. He played a, a, a just a regular guy who was in that system, and and he showed fear, he showed uh, insecurity and inadequacy and and bluster and and how he covered all that that fear and inadequacy and in, insecurity. He how he was able to cover that up, guys. So I, I I thought that was that was those were my favorites. Oh, good answer. All right. <laughs> how about you, Gary? Uh, I can cover Gary. I mean, The Godfather 1 and 2 are my two favorite films. Uh, I thought everybody did an amazing job, and it was very accurate uh, based on that time period and the start of the five families. Um, so I concur. And I'd have to say, uh, yeah, Goodfellas is probably my third favorite um, just because of accuracy. Um, you know, I think... As we were talking about, I think the Irishman and Appalachian are going to be great films as well. So right, we, we might uh, have, have new to ones. Say that I worked on all three of those. I was yeah. not old enough to have worked on the, the Godfather unless I was a child, but uh, it still is definitely up there as one of my favorites that I can always watch over and over and over again. Right. Yeah. How about like an individual performance from somebody? What, what What's your favorite? Do you have one? People don't. <clears throat> The guy who played Salazzo in The Godfather was one of my favorites, as well as, you know, obviously Michael Corleone. Right. By Al Pacino. But I liked Salazzo because he did very little. Um, I'm, I'm fascinated with actors that do very little to uh, to come up with a lot, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, James Conn was also fantastic, and he's also a, a buddy of mine. But I... Um, I um, yeah, I, I, I think that uh, those three characters uh, are my faves. The, his name is uh, Neary. I forgot his first name. Right. Al. Al. Yeah. Al. Yeah, he died very young. But he's great. Um, you know. And he was he was uh, brother-in-law with one of the Eboli brothers from uh, the Genesis family. That's right. Yeah. Yes, he was. Wow. Yeah. Great actor. See, I, didn't, I didn't know that. Okay, I'm getting good stuff here. I love it. <laughs> hey, uh, yeah, no, he, so, he was he's great. That's awesome. So when when we've recorded one uh, other show, like I said, we're going to be editing this all kind of together with some other stuff. But um, before I let you go, Gary, uh, the, the one actor that I had for my favorite, you know, role uh, had to have been Johnny Sack from The Sopranos. And I understand you've worked with Vince Curatola, haven't you? Not only did I work with him, we went to film school together <laughs> back in 1991, I believe. Wow. And, uh, yeah, we go back a long, long, long way. I actually directed him in a play. Right. Um, yeah, Vince was in a construction business in Jersey, and then, uh, you know, he, he always dabbled in acting, and then he got the role of Johnny Sack, and from there, the rest is history. Yeah, yeah that, was, that was my favorite character. He's still living show. out here, you know. It's funny, we all live out here. Jimmy Gandolfini lives here for you know, a spell he had a house. And uh we're all we're all pretty we were all pretty tight friends, you know, before that. You know, I know I knew Paulie Walnuts and Vincent Pastor is uh, obviously my cousin, so I know him. Um you know, we we we're a pretty tight group from the Sopranos and that was the one fun thing about working on the show is that I was working with the uh, friends and family just about every day. You know, and I, I missed that. I really do, but yeah, the, the deuce is becoming that where I'm working with a bunch of friends, and it's a pretty good environment. HBO does really good stuff, I have to say. They, uh, yeah. They know, they, know to, they know how to take care of business. You go to my website, which is 
with two R's, pastor.com. You'll see what I'm doing, what's coming up, what I have done, what I haven't done. You can uh, find me on Instagram at uh, Gary underscore pastor. And, All right. Uh, yeah. Follow me there. You still, still on Facebook, Gary? Because I know I used to see you in some of the yeah, uh, mob groups just, here I'm, and there. I'm getting sick of it, man. It's too much political nonsense. I really, <laughs> yeah. I find it very, it's becoming distracting. It used to be a great tool. I'll probably leave my uh, fan page up, but I'm I'm probably going to bail out of my private page. I just I don't have any use for it anymore. It's annoying. <laughs> yeah, I'll leave the fan page up, and I'll bail on the other one. But yeah, whatever. I mean it's good for you know for promoting what you're doing at least. Like I say, and if you know if you can keep from engaging in all the other the BS that's out there, it's still you know a good tool for that. But um, but yeah, well they try. Well, they, every time I get out, they bring me back in. You know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Awesome, that's a good gentlemen. One. I really appreciate everybody taking the time to come and do it. Like I said, uh, you know, here in the middle of the day, like this for you guys. I really right, appreciate you guys uh, thinking about us. And Gary, it's a pleasure meeting you. And hopefully, I'll yeah, get you out too. to KC and come see your film festival. Hey, you never know. Maybe right. Appalachians can play there, right? <laughs> it could, it could. Right now we're we're kind of a low budget film festival, but uh, uh, maybe if we get something going, why well, we'll we'll expand it and and we'll get the more popular movies in there. That would be awesome, wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah it would. I'd love it would to be come cool. Out for a nice Kansas City steak. It's been a while. Yeah, well, we've got them, plenty of them. Yeah, he's got a mob story. Right. He'll give you two there. But all right, gentlemen, yeah, really. uh, right. I appreciate right, you being here, and we'll talk to you guys soon. Okay. All right, guys. All right, bye, bye, guys. Bye.